This was certainly a show, wasn't it? I'm Paul Smith, BaseX, back to another video, and today I'm reviewing AEW Road Rager. That just happened about a few minutes ago. This show had its moments, and there was a couple good debuts. Uh, one really shocked me, and they're setting up for Fighter Fest next week, and the main event may shock you guys in how I feel about it. So, without, um... With that out of the way, I want to get a uh, quick, uh, quick uh, thing out of the way. First off, Richard Donner, famous director, has passed away due to the age of 91. Uh, famous, famous director. He passed away, I think, yesterday. And uh, I forgot, um, because my brother actually told me, and I didn't know who he was talking about at first. It was actually Richard Donner. Very famous director. Directed uh, Superman. Um, I think he directed Superman for Quest for Peace, which the less said about that movie, the better. Wonder Woman and many, many others. Great, great director. Rest in peace, my good sir. Also, Jimmy Yusu has been arrested again for his fourth DUI. Why? Because drinking under the influence is not a good idea there, folks. Always drink responsibly, kids. Or don't drink at all. I don't... I hope Jimmy gets this under control and... In my Discord, people are blaming Naomi because of that influence. I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure how to feel about that, but I can see why people are coming from there. Jimmy needs to uh, wake up and smell the roses and get sober, get clean, all that stuff. Because, well, seriously, he's going to be like the next Jeff Hardy of DUIs. Anyways... Let's get into the show properly. We start off with Cody with his ego stroking um, entrance versus QT Marshall. South Beach strap match, and I could have given a shit about this match. Didn't care about it. Why was this a strap match? Because reasons. This feud is never going to end. Look, Cody's a good athlete. QT, he's fine for what he is. Aaron Solo gets involved, and then Dustin comes down. Um. QT gets uh, thrown to the post. He bled. He bled pretty uh, pretty big. Then the lights go out, and then they come back on. It was probably a malfunction, or was it? They were in cahoots. Um, powerbomb off the top, which was pretty cool uh, from QT. Um, and then a no-sell, and then uh, no-sell the strap, strap shots. Uh, Cody's back did look pretty busted up. And then spit uh, from uh, QT. Three crossroads, and then uh, and then Cody wins. Okay, don't care. Can we can we move on from this feud, please? I think what happened later on, we might get a new feud. Thank God. And then uh, we get uh, Sean Spears backstage. Good recap of what happened last week between uh, Sammy Guevara and uh, MJF, and a pretty damn good uh, main event last week. Um. Spears says, look at you, look at me. You uh, stroke your own ego and all that stuff. And then Sammy attacks um, Spears with the chair. Are we going to have a chairs match? Chair on a pole. They're fighting over shampoo. Um, okay. And he said, gotcha, bitch. Okay. Tony Schiavone and Kenny Omega uh, in the ring. With Don Scarlet Fever Callus. He probably showed all the women his invisible hand. Karma is going to get Don Callis in the ass for that. Allegedly. This was not good. Because Omega can't talk and Don Callis is worse. Uh, Chance, we won Hangman and then the Dark Order come down. Uno says that, you know, you and Uncle Don talk about you're the best in the world. But, you know, you claim that you've beaten everyone. You haven't beat you. Yes, you've beaten Hangman and all that stuff, but you know Hangman's wanting Hangman's wanting you. And then a low blow, and then the Good Brothers, home of the Good Brothers, maybe take your order. They come down and they attack the Dark Order, and all of a sudden Hangman comes down, Cowboy Shiznet, as Jr. would call it. Jr. You are sixty nine years old, nice, and you're saying Cowboy Shiznet. What the hell are we living in right now? Um, and then Omega would get a stare down with them. It's obviously going to lead to a match at probably All Out where Hangman's going to take the title off of Omega. Hopefully. Because we actually get someone with personality and charisma. And they can learn how to talk. Look, people might be thinking I'm just bashing Hangman or bashing Omega because Omega's bad. Omega's not a bad wrestler. He's just bland. I just... 
A lot of the matches he's in is video game shit, and I don't care about it. Um, also, Nakazawa was there, but I didn't care to mention him because I don't care about Naka, 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 Naka. Anyways, um, Darby Allen, uh, Paige, uh, JR interview, talking about their coffin match next week because apparently WWE trademarked the casket match, pal. Um, okay, cool. Why is this feud still continuing? Never Ending Feuds, the sequel. Um, okay, you know... Uh, Darby's talking about how he lived alone and lived in his car for some for 12 years. And Paige said, you should be thanking me because I got you in AEW and all that stuff. Okay, I, I get what they're trying to do because they both like uh, they both had to grow up in the Indies and all that stuff. Uh, FTR Wardlow with uh, Tully Blanchard versus uh, Santana Ortiz and Jay Kager with Conan. I'm actually glad to see Conan is okay. I didn't care. I zoned out. I tuned out of the match at this point. Um, it's not that this was a bad match. I just didn't care about it. Reverse ankle lock, uh, ankle lock, and then tap out, and the pinnacle win. Cool. And then, um, Conan with his cock sock. I mean, um, um, uh, butterball, uh, butter sock, buttercock. No, not that. It tries to hit Wardlow, and then a chop block from Tully Blanchard. Why is this a feud? I don't want to see two 60s. I think Conan did the 60s, I think. I don't want to see two old men fighting in the ring. Credit. Granted, we got Undertaker versus Goldberg, where they both basically about died in that match, but that's in Saudi Arabia. Blood, blood soaked money and all. Okay, and then we get a Carl Anderson promo. Carl Anderson's going to put a mach machine gun all over John Moxley's face. Don't Google what the machine gun is, kids. You don't want to harm yourself and petrify yourself for the next coming 15 years. Okay, they're fighting over the IWGP US title next week. Okay, I think Moxley, I think, was uh, has been um, um, taking care of his uh, newborn child, which, good for them. Glad, glad, good for Renee and Moxley there. Uh, then we get an MJF and Jericho standoff. A, fa a fan debated it. A fat bastard. I got bigger titties than you do. If you get that Austin Powers reference, I love you guys. Okay, and then Jericho saying I had a shot. I haven't I have had that fat bastard having a shot at you. Basically what this is is um, Jericho, if you want to... Um, well, Jericho said that you know, MJF, um, I'll do whatever it takes. I'll stand in front of a Mack truck. I'll have sex with your mother. Again. Oh, it's personal. Oh, he said I'm going to have sex with a family member and all that stuff. We're not Gene Simmons here, folks. Anyways, he's the God of Thunder. No, he's not the Kiss song. I do prefer the death version of it. I don't know why, but death metal, uh, the, the death metal vocals of God of Thunder is so cheesy, but I like it because it's Chuck Schuldner. Rest in peace, Chuck Schuldner. I need to listen to Death sometime. I have listened to Scream Bloody Gore, though, and I did I did like that for what it was. Uh, or expect the retrospective and probably an uh, album ranking list in the future. But that's in the future, and this is now. So, basically, MJF is throwing MJF the gauntlet. He's going to have four... He's going to have Jericho face against four people of his choosing... And the stipulation of his choosing back to back to back to back. It's a gauntlet match. He's going to make Jericho run the gauntlet. And the fifth person is going to be MJF. And um, the five labors of Hercules. He's going to give birth five times. Not like that. Um. Okay. Cool. And um, uh, we're going to have it on a handshake. Um, Jericho will shake his hand and then juice effect. Okay, if it leads to the Pinnacle and Earth Circle feud ending, then I'm fine with that. Um, and then Tony Schiavone, Rebel, and Britt Baker are backstage talking about uh, Nyla Rose and all that stuff. And uh, they're going to be, I think they're going to be facing that, I think, Fighter Fest Night 2, I believe. They're going to have a championship match on the line, I think. Um, and then we got Andrade El Idolo with Matt Seidel. Andrade with Vicky Guerrero, unfortunately. First Matt Seidel. Match was good. Uh, it was a fine match. Uh, good showcase for uh, Andrade. 
Um, what's with the baseball, what's with the White Sox theme here, guys? What's with the Chicago White Sox theme here? We're in Miami. I didn't get it. Everybody, it looked like everybody was wearing baseball, like baseball shorts and baseball jeans or baseball, wearing baseball attire, and I didn't get it. Again, match was fine. I like the, uh, double moonsault spot that Andrade always does. Double knees to the back, and then the El Idolo. It's, it, it's kind of like the Hammerlock ADT, but he did an STO. One, two, three to Matt Sayo. Okay, fine. I like the match. Pretty good match. Um, and then in the end, a weird cross arm, arm bar, like variant with the strap. Okay, send in a message. I was fine with that. If we get Matt Hardy in a Christian Cage promo, they're going to be facing next week on Fighter Fest because 2009 has not left us, folks. Hopefully it's not the Raw era because that was a terrible, 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 terrible year for Raw. And then Arn Anderson and Tully, um, uh, not Tully, and Tony Schiavone in the ring. I love Arn. I love Arn. He sounded rough. He sounded out of shape. He sounded... He, he sounded exhausted. I kind of fear for Arn at this point because, yes, I know Father Time is undefeated and it'll catch up to you, but I'm starting to fear for Arn's health at this point. And then he said that we missed you guys and all that stuff. Lights go out. Oh, no. Alistair Black is here. Tommy End. And now he's going, he's being called Malachi Black. Black mask to Arn. I'm afraid. I'm surprised that Arn took a bump. And then a Black mask to Cody. It's probably going to lead to a few between Black and Cody. Okay. Didn't expect that. It looked like Alistair had a bruised eye for some reason. But if you want to keep it kayfabe, you want to keep it kayfabe. Okay. Interesting. Then um, we cut to Ricky Starks. I think this happened on, uh, I, think on uh, LO, uh, I think on Dark. Or it showed earlier today that uh, Starks has a special security. And uh, Hobbs and Hook. It's Hook. He, uh, they show up and then Team Taz, uh, and then Taz comes down saying, you'll need security. And, you know, Starks talks about how he's going to uh, take the FTW title from, um, Brian Cage. And the W stands for wife. F the wife. Do you get it, folks? Granted, Melissa Santos is goddamn gorgeous. Okay. And then Taz comes, uh, and then Cage comes down and wrecks house and all that stuff. Okay. Okay, and then we get the blade, uh, we get the blade with the flesh apron, Gross, and the bunny, aka Allie, versus, uh, Chris Natlander, damn, and Orange Cassidy. The match was whatever, I didn't care about it. Uh, a four, area four, uh, area, uh, area 450 to, uh, the blade, and then, uh, uh, look, Allie's a good, Allie's not a bad athlete, she's just not that good. Uh, she's average at best. Let's just say that. And then uh, Brass Nux to Orange Cassidy. But then Big Bang Theory to uh, The Bunny. One, two, three. Okay, there you have it. Enough said. Uh, then Jungle Boy wins an award for earning 50 wins of some, some kind. And then Tony Schiavone is in the crowd. And then the American top team coach. I forgot, I forgot who his name was. I forgot to write his name down. He's promoting, you know, the UFC fight between uh, for the Conor McGregor fight that's coming up, which I don't care about because I don't want UFC. And forgot the I forgot the girl's name. I forgot the uh, the, uh, the uh, woman's name who looked like she could kick my ass if I look at her the wrong way, and you would too. Um, he talks about that how AEW sucks, and you know, pro wrestling has been on a downhill since the '90s. Not necessarily, but I can see where he's coming from. And he said he'll pop into VHS of Chip Chip wrestling from Florida. You know, like uh, Jack Briscoe, uh, Joe, uh, Jimmy Valentine. You know, um, all the greats, uh, Ronnie Garvin, all the greats, uh, Dusty Rhodes. You know, he. I think he might be a legitimate fan, and uh, he knows his history. And then uh, Archer comes down, and then he hits the blackout. On the coach. Okay, cool. Fighter Fest card. Uh, Yuka Sakazaki. She's going to make her return to Gina Girl. Yay. I like Yuka. Uh, and then we get the Yellow Bucks versus Penta and Eddie. Street fight for the tag titles. I did not expect to like this match, but I actually did. Even with Don Callis on commentary, who I can't stand, I actually didn't mind this match. 
It got a little overbooked towards the end, but that's the Young Bucks match. Less said, less known. Um, so there was some stuff here that I actually find uh I thought was fine. Nakazawa got involved, but he got taken out by the Bucks on accident. A what's up to Nick with the chair. Um and then um we get a power bomb on a table, and then we get a continue destroyer through a table from Penta, which that was a cool spot. I actually kinda like that spot. Um, and then we get a senton on a trash can, and then um, we get a rear naked choke on Matt, and then a 450 to the ref, and then uh, Matt's tapping, but there's no ref, and then the Good Brothers come down, um, and then uh, we get a Topa, a Topa Suicida, or a Tope kind of low to uh, the Good Brothers from Penta, then Color gets involved, he's trying to use a cold spray and all that stuff. And then Kaz comes down and uh, power bombs uh, Cutler through the table. That kind of looked like a pretty bad bump, I will admit. But hey, Cutler looked like he was fine. Um, and then a fear factor, and then a uh, backhand. Um, and then uh, but the ref gets pulled out. Um, gross. Uh, the ref pulled out. Gross. Magic Killer on the floor to Kaz, and then the thumbtacks come out. Uh, thumbtacks to the eyes of um, Eddie, and then we get a super hurricane Rana off the top on the tax, but a but a uh, um, a breakup, and then a super kick while the tax are are put uh, in Eddie's mouth, and then the Young Bucks win. Okay, yes, it may have gotten overbooked towards the end, but I actually enjoyed the match for what it was, and even though I, I'm not a Young Bucks fan, this was a pretty good show, even though I'm probably in my notes here. This was a pretty good show. There were some low points, though. Anyways, what did you guys think of this episode? Do you think it was good? Did you think it was bad? Let me down in the comment section below. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Top of more notifications. Join the herd. I'll talk to you guys next video. Peace out.